so uh, greetings to the patron sri rajendra ratno ed and idm dr salas kumar agarwal building materials and technology promotion council ministry of housing and urban affairs uh, our eminent guest speaker shri madhukar uh, madhukar sir swambhu founder and research head vedik shrijan llp professor chandan ghosh head resilient division infrastructure and idm respected all participants for your immense presence i abhipsha mohante young professional and idm welcomes you all for uh, this session today's webinar on basically on how rejuvenation of water body by natural extracts work so before starting the session i would like to thank sri rajendra ratno ed and idm for allowing us to conduct this webinar as a moderator of the session i would like to provide you a uh, few of the information for the smooth convenience of the webinar an idm has initiated a webinar series which will be conducted every friday this webinar is a third part of the series before we dive into the main discussion i will briefly explain the purpose of this webinar this will set the stage and the conversation give your audience a clear understanding regarding that what we are going to expect from this session we encourage the active participation from the audience side please feel free to submit your questions and comments in the question and answer platform throughout the webinar we will do our best to address as many of them as possible during the question and answer session this will be a recorded webinar the it, it it is a live streaming session and the link is already provided in the chat box you can uh, like uh, check it for a future reference this webinar constitutes a live example and experience sharing pertaining to the uh, address the key concerns which basically aimed to serve as an excellent opportunity for professional stakeholders including the locals to learn about that how we are going to rejuvenate the water bodies the water body is basically treated as the lungs of the city so how we are degrading the quality of the water bodies day by day and how it leads to it impact us in how many manner and today we uh, we will learn about that what should be the rejuvenation process through the natural extracts how it works and how it will help us to fight against the climate change so this will be our basic purpose for this webinar and we will be gathering here to learn and to listen about the listen from the experts and i'm definitely sure that we will learn a lot from this session so thank you sir for joining us now before to start with our request i will once check uh, chandan sir that uh, whether he has fixed the problem or not sir is it okay ah uh, yes sir okay 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 so i welcome you sir in this session and i'll request sir to set the context for this webinar over to you sir uh, okay so uh, let us welcome uh, uh, our today's uh, today's uh, uh, oh still echo oh, is still echo is coming just i'll fix just it i'll up fix it up in a few minutes this something this something ah uh, ik uh, yeah. ik yeah no problem sir no problem sir so uh, so I'm, uh, saying... i'm saying i'm saying I request. I request. Please mute your mic. Mute your mic. It's open. It's open. Ah, uh, yeah. So this webinar will also set as a platform to collaborating with various stakeholders. So it will maintain a synergy between that how we are going to deal this type of concerns that will again in further that leads us towards resilience and it will also contribute in climate change mitigation. We we can able to like uh, address or we can able to mitigate some of the contribution from this factor by treating the lungs of the city. Currently, our lungs of the cities are impacted due to the rapid urbanization. and due to the anthrop several anthropogenic interventions activities so so this is the platform so we need to understand that how it is important to treat the water bodies and how we are going to deal it with deal it with so that it will be beneficial for our society for our environment and also for the we will can deal with the climate change aspects so as we might be aware that maximum share of water bodies are uh, like uh, india has a uh, 
has a god gifted of these water bodies and now the maximum share of the water bodies are currently unfit for use so there are several techniques to rejuvenate water bodies currently um, in india also lot of lakes are currently uh, unfit and government has initiated various rejuvenation techniques some has adopted the floating island techniques so they are treating it with some better ways and some are establishing the stps to fight with the like fight with these challenges so today we will be learning that rejuvenation process through natural extracts that sir has done tremendous uh, contribution in this field so i have also gone through the videos it is shared on the youtube that vedic uh, vedic shrijan llp has uh, uh, treated the water like how they have treated the water of the amdavad lake so so basically we will be hearing a great session from sir today so thank you sir for joining us today okay am i audible now yes sir you are um i think okay uh, let me uh, take it uh, let us welcome uh, shri madhukar ji uh, hello 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 ek minute ek minute ek minute ek minute Thank you, sir, for joining us again. For joining us again. <laughs> so there is some technical problems. Technical you can understand. Problems you can understand. Actually, my uh, previous life was into IT, so I understand all these technical stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Sir. <laughs> we we are the people who have been um, instrumental in creating these kind of experiences for the people. being in it <laughs> so i understand it completely so creating and solving, creating and solving from your end only from your end only yeah actually uh, the problem is uh, often there into the basic user interface itself you know we when we are creating an interface for the people uh, to work on we are actually continuously thinking uh, with an it mindset not from a user mindset so that is why there are complexities in the user interface so things will improve eventually it's it's not just in nidm it, it happens even in world bank <laughs> everywhere everywhere so <laughs> the technical snags are there everywhere so we have to learn to live with it sir in between sir in between at like to at like to opportunity to opportunity to share your experience your experience like in the formal session the formal session so mm -hmm. you can share so you your, can share your how your journey how your journey from as a it from as a it entrepreneur and governmental expert it works and it works so and it motivates and you to motivates join you to join this section actually uh, somebody is saying that um abeep sir your voice is also echoing so somebody just put in a chat box comment so basically uh, we were into communication uh, network backbone all of us uh, are having an it background and uh, we were creating the communication backbone for the country for the enterprises for government and all So, you know when uh, we got into the it industry internet was a luxury it was not a necessity so it was limited to only it delhi and mumbai and the only provider was videsh sanchar nigam limited so then we started working with dot for creating the national internet backbone then we worked with uh, railways for kris network the army service communication network so that was our forte for almost uh, over two decades and then 2011 we started doing a research into all this for which you have invited me for a talk today so this is uh, about a decade old research that we started in 2011 talk sir your problem is fixed now ha yeah yeah ha yeah 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 oh again it's again it's happening, it is happening. <laughs> So anyway, so anyway, you 
I don't know because I'm. I don't know because I'm using a different laptop here. Maybe the microphone side open simultaneously so that because I request everyone to switch everyone to switch off their. When you are speaking, when you are speaking, then also it is happening. Yes, sir. I'm a sir. I'm a sir. So as an administrator into uh, Cisco Webex, you can put everybody's mic uh, on uh, mute. Uh, uh. You can do it uh, as the host. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, from you your see, side, from your side, side it is who, is who is coming? Who is coming? Okay. Uh, can we? Is it fine? Hello? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, you are audible. But uh, still, but, echo is still coming. Echo is I don't coming. Know. I don't know. No, to me, there is no echo in your voice, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it is echoing locally in your system itself. So maybe your uh, microphone and your uh, laptop uh, microphone, both of them are on. So you can either switch off the system microphone or uh, your uh, attachment microphone, whatever you have. There are two mics working in your system. Okay. Yeah. In your Webex screen, where, wherever you see the logo of mute, there you can select a particular mm -hmm. microphone. There's a drop down menu. This never happened because I'm using, I'm using, using the mic. different mic. Uh, uh, the first time, first time. Okay. Okay. No, I think I have, I to, think keep I have to keep off because of the technical so problem. The you problem. continue. You continue. So should I start the presentation, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. yeah you please. Can you can start. Habib, sir, can I share my screen? Is my screen visible? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Well, start the presentation. Uh, we have uh, invented this technology that we call as the Kaonomics technology. And uh, this is a technology for, uh, I mean, our concept is to consume the contamination, consume and digest the contamination instead of collecting it. Usually the approach is to segregate and collect the contamination, whereas the natural process is to consume and digest the contamination. So that is why we treat in situ. Our technology has been uh, awarded as the ESG enabler technology of uh, the year 2023 by Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. Um, the Ministry of uh, Housing and Urban Affairs has uh, declared us as the mission partners in terms of uh, the technology and implementation partner for Atal Mission for Rejuvenation of Urban Transformation uh, 2.0. And uh, Ministry of Jal Shakti has uh, awarded us as Water Hero. We registered with Startup India and MSME. Uh, so that's a brief about our technology, what we have done so far. and the kind of recognition that we have. Now, uh, moving on to the water bodies and their problems, be it uh, across the country or across the globe. 
all the natural surface water bodies have got similar problems the problems are like periodic uh, siltation and sludge deposit flooding of the water bodies water logging around the water bodies algal bloom weed infestation outbreak of vector in waterborne diseases uh, eutrophication runoff water and storm water getting into it uh, sewage or effluent discharge getting into it and maintenance is a very high operational cost and very high maintenance cost so opex and apex are very high and uh, because the approach that we have which is usually dredging and deweeding right so these are the common problem everybody would have seen uh, it into the water body across uh, uh, the vicinity so how do we address this problem is uh, actually uh, the key to solution. Uh, now, the difference between our approach and any other approach in the world is that uh, every approach is trying to just clean the water, considering water bodies to be a pool or reservoir of water. Whereas the approach that we take uh, into economics technology into magic surgeon. Sorry. Yeah, the approach that we take in uh, Kaunomics or uh, in Vedic Srijan is that every surface water body is an ecosystem service provider. There are a lot of services that every water body has been showered upon as a responsibility. Now, if we understand those services, uh, it is a very uh, easier to deal with uh, the water body in this way as a sustainable and a holistic solution. So let's first understand the responsibilities of the water bodies. That is how the presentation is structured. We have divided the responsibilities into three different categories. The first category uh, of the ecosystem services provided by the wetlands and the water bodies is mitigation. Air pollution mitigation, water pollution mitigation, uh, flood, drought, water logging mitigation, vector and waterborne disease outbreak mitigation. Now, usually people will uh, unable to relate to it that how can a water body in a healthy condition can take care of air pollution. Uh, so basically what happens is a naturally healthy water body will have the top surface as negatively charged. Whereas what we call as pollution into the air is uh, primarily the particulate matter, whether it is PM uh, 0.5 or PM2 or 2.5 or PM5 or PM10, all these are the categories of particulate matter. Now, largely the particulate matter are positively charged, freely floating solid particles in air. Because they are positively charged in the top surface of the water body, negatively charged, they naturally get attracted towards the top surface and the air pollution mitigation will happen. Now, this is a natural process, right? Uh, similarly, uh, water bodies contribute a lot of uh, oxygenation also into the air because uh, if you look at the aquatic food chain, there's single celled organism which are autotrophic in nature, they'll uh, do a carbon sequestration from the atmosphere, use it uh, for uh, their food production and release oxygen. So all the greenhouse gases can be captured by the water body. By that virtue, every water body is a blue carbon sink, right? Now this oxygen is produced within the water body and it is uh, emitted from within the water body. So the dissolved oxygen level of the water body is maintained. But when the production is beyond the holding capacity of water, it is emitted into the air. So that is why you have more oxygenated air around the water bodies. So this is again a process of uh, making the air more fresh with more oxygenation, uh, reducing the greenhouse gases from the atmosphere and also attracting the particulate matter. So these are all air pollution mitigation functions performed by the water bodies provided they are in healthy condition. In their polluted condition, uh, the water bodies actually become emitters because uh, the organic matter within deposited within the water body will uh, be decomposed and greenhouse gases will be produced from the water body and they'll be emitted into the air when it goes beyond the holding capacity of the water. Right. So 
water bodies are the only structure which can go both ways except for water bodies there is no other process there is no other being on this planet which can be uh, doing sequestration as well as emission right so water bodies depending upon their uh, health condition can go both ways right then the water pollution water pollution is basically the nutrient overload this overload is actually uh, digested by the water body and uh, uh, the nutrients are used for production of planktons which will uh, have a ripple effect on the population of fishes and shrimps and um, turtles and crabs into the water basically all the aquatic organism which feed upon the planktons right uh, recently during the global uh, lockdown due to pandemic we have seen that all newspapers and all tv channels started reporting that rivers had started becoming cleaner during the lockdown period so that is the self healing mechanism of the water body that they can cleanse themselves the overload can be digested uh, provided it is falling within the digestion capacity of the water bodies so that is uh, another uh, mitigation service then uh, the flood drought and water logging are all three linked to one basic system because if you look at all the surface water bodies everywhere there is a same configuration the bottom is soil then we have water and then we have air so this bottom soil is actually grinded by the movement of water and soil is transformed into silt now this silt being a smaller grain than the soil layers so it will percolate down and it will create soil capillaries now these capillaries will link the surface water body to the underground aquifer now whenever this happens basically it is a process of making water body perennial enabling rainwater harvesting uh, mitigating flood, mitigating drought, and water logging in the vicinity. So this is again a natural process. During heavy downpour during the monsoon period, uh, the surface water body will have a, a higher pressure. So the water will straight away go to the aquifer, recharge the aquifer through the soil capillaries. And reverse of it will happen during peak of summer when the evaporation rate is high water will be pulled up from the aquifer and the water body will remain perennial. So this is uh, another kind of mitigation service. And as far as the diseases outbreak is concerned, uh, both water and vector borne diseases will happen only when the water body is under decay condition, right? So this decay is actually uh, being caused due to uh, nutrient overload, which is coming in in the form of contaminants into the water body and the water viscous Abib sir, you're trying to say something. Should I take a pause? No, sir, no, sir. I'm trying to. That's why it's done. Okay. So, in a water body, uh, when the stagnation is there, when there is a sludge deposit in the bottom and the water viscosity is high, the, the natural flow of water will get compromised and water will become still. We will go through the case studies wherein you will understand what kind of uh, scenario that I'm talking about because I'm going to show you a video of still water. Uh, so this still water actually becomes the best breeding ground for the mosquitoes. And that is why the vector bone disease outbreak is possible. And uh, when the uh, water contamination goes to the extent that the BOD and COD is at peak and DO is minimal or almost negligible, that is the time when the anaerobic life uh, develops into the water body. And this anaerobic life can actually cause uh, a lot of problems. Like one of the problem is the foul smell in the vicinity, because whenever anaerobic digestion of the organic matter will happen, the natural byproduct is hydrogen sulfide, which causes the foul smell around the water body, right? 
Now, this might even actually impact uh, the people with a, a pulmonary disorder, uh, causing their uh, lungs uh, to have a problem in breathing. Apart from that, uh, there are various uh, anaerobic uh, life forms which are causing various kind of diseases. So if the water is infected with a microbial infestation, it can cause uh, cholera, it can cause, uh, I mean, people coming in contact with the water can actually have itching on their skin. Uh, there are various other diseases possible, right? So mitigation service uh, is basically taking care of the vector and the waterborne diseases also if the water body is in a healthy condition these diseases will also not happen the second kind of services that we have is the conservation service wherein the biodiversity aquatic food chain temperature maintenance in the vicinity uh, groundwater recharge and correction moisture in soil and air uh, flora fauna um, water quality and carbon sequestration which i just explained these are again uh, another kind of services from the water bodies and then we have the maintenance services like maintaining the water body as a perennial water body ambient temperature electrolyte balance um, maintaining a healthy native microbiota oxygen levels in soil water and air uh, low water viscosity and soil capillaries for recharge and correction of the aquifer so these are the three different categories of ecosystem services being provided by all the surface water bodies and wetlands. Now the same has been concluded by the Ramsar Convention uh, in uh, July 2018 that all the 17 UN SDG goals are met just by maintaining a good health of our wetlands and the water bodies. Now, how all this is done is what we can cover into the case studies. So, water smart and water sovereign Bharat can only be Atma Nirbhar Bharat. That is what is our approach. That is what is our concept. Uh, and uh, the photograph that you see here of before and after uh, is basically for a pond in Muradabad. Uh, that uh, we have rejuvenated with our technology and we'll cover various other case studies into the upcoming slides. So let's start with uh, the city of Kashi, Varanasi, which also happens to be the Prime Minister's constituency, wherein uh, we have done resurrection of uh, the native ecology of the water body which is under um, Archaeological Directorate of Uttar Pradesh. The water body is called Lehertara Lake. Here you can see the Google Earth image. This is the water body. Uh, this water body is known as uh, the Kabir Prakatya Thali. Sant Kabir was found in this water body in 1498. And this side of uh, the water body, there is Varuna River, and this side it is Ganga River. Now, if you actually look into this uh, Google Earth imagery, this is also water body, this is also water body. There's so many water bodies all around, right? And this is a railway track. Now, this entire area is uh, segregated by this road on this side, and this is another road and a flyover on the other side. Now, this entire area used to be a 40 acres wetland way back in 1498, which has been grossly encroached by human habitation. You can see colonies all around. And this water body is now actually uh, transformed into the collection of sewage because untreated sewage from 20,000 homes used to land into this particular water body. Uh, when we started the treatment in uh, uh, November 21, uh, the water body was in such a pathetic condition that you could not stand next to it for even two minutes because of the foul smell. There were billions of mosquitoes all around. Now, let me just show you a video so that you are able to relate to it. 
this is the pre-treatment condition. You can see the embankment, stone pitching, and boundary, and light poles. Everything is there. So that entire beautification work was already done by Varanasi Development Authority. Now let me just show you the condition of water. If you just look into it, this entire water is still. There are no waves at all. So this is what I was talking about. The water viscosity being so high that the water becomes still. And that is why this was this entire water body was a mosquito breeding ground. Now these green patches that you see is the algal bloom. The black patches that you see is the smudge because the sludge deposit has been so high that the deposited sludge has also started floating. So that is what we call a smudge. And you will also see some white patches here and there. That is the fungal growth. Now, one more thing to observe is the level of water. This newly built platform is actually submerged into the water. Now, you can see the green patches and the white patches here and there. Now, this, this platform, if you see, this platform is actually submerged under water. There is water over the platform. Now, when we spoke to uh, the Pollution Control Board, their estimation was that seven feet of sludge deposit is there into this water body. And every day, six mm of sludge is coming in. It is fresh sludge is getting deposited. Because in this 12.75 acre water body, the daily inlet was 10 million liters of untreated sewage. So this was the pre-treatment condition. Now I will take you through this entire journey. 19th of November, the treatment started. And you can see this is just a difference of three days. What you have to observe is the color here and the color here. This is towards black. This is towards gray. This portion you can also see waves. Here there are no waves. So the top surface of water is actually uh, dark black and opaque. And the water is absolutely still. In a matter of three days, you can see a lot of waves are there. The basic reason of this transformation in a matter of three days was the deposit and the inlet both being more organic in nature because it was domestic sewage which was coming in. Now that was just a matter of three days. Now you look at 10 days. Now this was pre-treatment. You see the top surface is opaque. This is after 10 days you can see you can see through the water surface. What you're seeing is the bottom of the tank standing on the embankment, right? So the bottom has become visible, water is transparent. So when the transparency is going up, that means viscosity is going down. So initially what you saw was the waves. Second, what you saw was the transparency. So this was the impact in 10 days. Now, moving on to two weeks, what you can see here is that the water level has started going down. Why the water uh, goes down is basically because I told you the sludge deposit was seven feet estimated by Pollution Control Board. Now, when this sludge is uh, consumed by the native microbiota, so the space is created which is reclaimed by water. And you see all these stairs were above, uh, were below water earlier. Now they're above water, which means the sludge deposit is being consumed and water is reclaiming the space. That is why from the top surface, when you look at it, you will see uh, that the water level is going down. This phenomena is called eco dredging. Now, after one month, this was the news headline created by Danik Jagran. That for the first time in recorded history, oxygen level, the dissolved oxygen level of uh, the lake 
was higher than that of river ganga itself in varanasi ganga had 5.5 uh, and uh, lehertara had 9.5 there was a 102% jump into the dissolved oxygen level while there is a massive correction in almost all the parameters like fecal coliform which is the disease causing bacteria has gone down by 90% the total coliform has gone down by 87% salinity has gone down by 80% right but dissolved oxygen was something which was uh, considered to be the most difficult to attain and within one month this was the condition which was attained now here what you see is a video of summer of 22 uh, which means almost about 6 months after the treatment uh, it is very important to note that all these uh, points that you see on your video are the inlet of the untreated sewage from all these homes which are next to the water body right during peak of summers every year this water body used to get completely dried dried to the extent that uh, kids could actually play cricket and kabaddi in this uh, field instead of the lake but in 22 because of uh, the treatment was on the water body was still a water body and to the extent that these kids had made a boat of their own jugad and they are boating they're swimming they're catching fishes they are having a wonderful time using this water body as a recreational property there was a massive footfall you can see waves all around there were fishes and turtles and ducks and everything was found into the same water body which did not have any kind of life before we started the treatment so this was the condition again if you look at this this uh, platform was actually submerged under water almost two and a half feet water is below this surface now these kids have started swimming they have jumped out of the boat no uh, somebody asked a question whether the sewage was stopped no sewage was stopped no drain was stopped or diverted whatever was coming in was still coming in only thing which has happened due to the treatment is that the digestion capacity of water has been increased to the extent that the inlet of the sewage is actually getting digested in the ecosystem so this was a case study of a lake for you wherein uh, we uh, treated i mean uh, the treatment was 100 percent in situ these are the scientific data suspended solids gone down bod uh, ph cod do so all the parameters were impacted and everywhere you can actually see uh, the difference this entire study was actually done by uh, Uttar Pradesh Pollution Control Board, uh, Varanasi office. Now from UP, let's move on to Punjab. Uh, this is the case of Patiala, where we have done uh, in-situ rejuvenation of a sewage drain itself. Uh, this is the Google Earth imagery. You can see this is the path of the drain. This is called model town drain. This side, this is a village called Dhammu Majra. This side, you can see the government sewage treatment plant. Uh, and this is a canal, the irrigation canal, right? Now, the villagers uh, were having a lot of problem with this uh, drain because of the foul smell, because of the mosquitoes, because of, uh, I mean, most of uh, the people uh, with uh, old age uh, members in the family and the youngsters i mean the kids in the family they were having a lot of health issues also uh, the 
chikungunya and dengue outbreak was also at the peak in uh, this particular area every year now this drain was to be treated these are the points of intervention our approach is very simple we study the water body first we make a medicine which is 100% botanical extract this medicine is shipped to the location where it is amalgamated with fresh water from the same agroclimatic zone and poured into the water body early morning at the time of sunrise during the day when the sunlight is available when photons are available this entire medicine is synthesized by the uh, aqua ecology and the resurrection process starts now again have a look at the pre treatment video wherein you can see that in spite of a drain which is supposed to flow there is absolutely zero flow in water the water was completely stagnant it was black nothing is visible below the water there is a lot of smudge massive foul smell was there which of course cannot be captured into a video so this was the condition uh, 10 mld of untreated sewage and 9 mld of treated wastewater was being uh, drained into this uh, channel there was a very high outbreak of uh, vector borne diseases into that dhamu majara village now this was the intervention as i said we studied the water body uh, we made a herbal extract medicine and it was amalgamated with fresh water and poured into the water body now this is the pouring which is happening early morning at the time of sunrise what you can observe here is a lot of froth and a lot of uh, grayish black substance oozing out at the point where the dosing is happening now what is oozing out is basically sludge it is very well understood all this froth that you can see is basically indicative of the amount of phosphate which is there into this water so as i said uh, there was 10 mld of untreated sewage and 9 mld of treated wastewater which is coming in uh, everything is having a lot of phosphate the animal waste is also having a lot of organic lower end phosphate uh, plus uh, ammonia nitrate nitrite right so all this is coming into this drain that is why when the dosing is happening there is a lot of froth all around right Now from here when we move on you can see within a matter of one month this entire flow is reinstated you can see the flow of water and on purpose there was no physical cleaning done so that you can understand all those quality and everything but solids which are lying here are still lying there and still you are able to see a flow and the transparency of the water you can see this submerged plank concrete plank you can see from the top surface right so this was again a coverage by dainik jagran which says uh, vedik gyan se nikli naale ki safai ki technique naala se nadi pariyojana he was the chairman of punjab pollution control board this project we did for punjab pollution control board only it was a, a study project for them and uh, punjab biotechnology lab was uh, engaged for collection of samples of water sludge and air and astonishingly they were able to see a difference a positive difference in all the three parameters over two months you see the air pollution has also gone down the water condition has also improved and the sludge quality has also improved now we have seen a lake and a drain now we are moving on to a case study of a river this is mandakini river in chitrakoot district satna of madhya pradesh this was a pre treatment condition and this was the post treatment condition the intervention was done only for a month and within the month they were able to see a substantial change right now the key problem was sewage inflow water was absolutely black and this uh, place has got a lot of uh, you know pilgrim value because it is believed that uh, ram ji sita ji and lakshman ji during their exile they spent about 12 and a half years 
on this uh, ghat of chitrakoot so every 15 days there is either amavasya or purnima and lots of lots of people come here for taking a snan and taking a dip and they also uh, consider this as a holy uh, river uh, so they call it mandakini ganga right so it is uh, as pious as ganga river into the uh, public sentiments now the problem started here in the year 2015 for the first time when the mandakini river flooded for the first time now this is a very small river just about 58 uh, kilometers and the uniqueness of this river is that it is one of the only few rivers which flows from south to north so it is a northward flowing uh, river starts from satyanusuya ghat in madhya pradesh and uh, culminates into uh, a place called raja bazar in uttar pradesh uh, wherein it uh, it has a confluence with river Yamuna. Now, uh, 2015, it flooded for the first time, followed in 16, followed in 17. Then NP Pollution Control Board took a suomodo cognizance of the eventuality and they got an approval for building a sewage treatment plant of 4.7 MLD. So the construction started in 17, it got completed in 18. 18, it was functional, dedicated to the people of Chitrakoot, still it flooded in 18, it flooded in 19. Basically, what happens is when you're building an STP, what you're trying to control is the quality of the inlet to the water body. What happens to the water which is already there into the water body? And specifically in case of the river, the river floods because the channel is choked with sludge deposit, right? So basically, when the water is not getting a route to actually get into the soil surface to recharge the aquifer, obviously the spillover will happen. So sewage treatment plant was constructed, but then uh, the flood mitigation could not actually happen because STP was only treating the fresh inlet which was coming in, right? We did a project just for a month's time, free of cost, proof of concept for them. And I'm very happy to say that 2020 it rained more than 2019 in Chitrakoot and still it did not get flooded. So that is the biggest success of our uh, treatment in this particular water body. Now here there is a boatman who's giving an interview to our people where he says that there is a lot of difference in the scene. Is he audible? Is this video audible to you? Yes, sir, it's audible. Yes, sir, it's audible. So he's saying that the transparency has gone up. Maneuvering of the boat has become very easy. Because earlier, is... he's talking about the weeds which have become weaker due to the treatment, and uh, he's the maneuvering of the boat has become easier. Later on, he also says that uh, we are thankful to you because our tip has increased. Because now when we take people along and the transparency of the water has gone up, we can actually show them a fish uh, which is roaming around 10 feet or 15 feet below the boat. And uh, people are able to see those fishes and they give us a better tip, right? So this was uh, the condition and this was the impact within a matter of one month. So this was uh, the completion certificate or the appreciation certificate given by the administration that uh, they could actually see a better uh, aquatic life after the treatment. So that was the case study of a river. Now, similarly, we have got plenty of other case studies. Now, this is Jor Pukhri in Guwahati. Uh, which was a very interesting case study because this was more of a biodiversity conservation project than a water body rejuvenation project. You can see that the pre-treatment condition, uh, the water color was different and 
the birds prefer to stay outside of the water whereas post treatment you can see post intervention and just, this is just a difference of one month that they started preferring being inside the water body the water color has changed the transparency has gone up so all parameters the, the, the basically the life exuberates around a healthy water body similarly we have done a project in Ahmedabad which uh, Avipsa was talking about which was there into the invite also the same photograph this is EDUT Lake in Ahmedabad the time difference is just 15 days from these fungal patches from the algal bloom still water dark green color of water to this condition it was just a matter of 15 days uh, this is uh, Muradabad you can see the pre-treatment it was actually looking like a ground and post treatment this was the condition this is Ujjain Mahakal temple inside the temple there is this kund which is called Koti Tirth kund and this was pre-treatment and this is post treatment this is Ayodhya Lal Diggi Lake similarly we have done it in Puri Odisha uh, this is Muradabad again, another water body in Muradabad. This is a rural water body in Somipat, Haryana. And this is in Katak, Odisha. So basically what we need to understand is the approach where we are going wrong. I think somebody asked a question. Avipsa, can you just read out the question which was there in the chat? Yes, sir. Somebody. Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. Sir, uh, there is sir, one. Uh, there is one question. Yeah. Um, sir, uh, sir, festival uh, timely missed you because timely missed you because Sunday opening of the market is opening of the market to eco to eco. Okay. So should I continue with the presentation now? Uh, yeah, sure, sir. Uh, yeah, sure, sir. Uh, question, uh, session, 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 presentation. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Sir. So, uh, as uh, everybody would have gone through the invite of uh, the session, wherein different approaches have been discussed. So, let us understand each and every approach in detail so that when we are attempting to do uh, something, we have a, a complete in depth knowledge. The common approach that Usually the administration takes this. Uh, I would rather call it reclaiming a water body is misunderstood as rejuvenation of the water body. And reclamation approach is if you have to uh, conserve a water body, if you have to rejuvenate a water body, you first throw the entire water out and create a body. I mean, water body actually becomes a, just a body because there is no water into it. Now, this is a real time case study from. Uh, this is restored Vimleshwar Tirth Pond in Sagga village of Nidokhedi block in Karnal district. Pre-treatment, you can see the entire water was there. Post-treatment, there is no water. There is just a dugout water body and there is a walkway around. Waiting for the rains to come and fulfill, uh, fill up the uh, need of the water. Right. So this is actually a wrong approach. Uh, the other common approaches are sewer treatment plant, rainwater harvesting, water body desilting, and plantation drive. Sewer treatment plant, as I explained in the Mandakini River case study, that you can only treat the inlet which is coming in. You cannot treat the water body with a sewer treatment plant. And that is why if we look at wherever we have taken an approach of sewer treatment plant installation next to a water body, it has eventually failed. Like um, if you look at uh, Dull Lake, 70s, the first STP was installed, 80s, second, 90s, third. Now they are uh, planning to install the fourth one. So that is why uh, Committee of Experts for Dull Lake Rejuvenation was constituted by Honorable High Court of Jammu and Kashmir. And they evaluated all the technologies. They first went and evaluated the uh, existing sewage treatment plants and they were astonished to see that the quality of the inlet for treatment in the STP was better than the quality of outlet which was being discharged into Dull Lake, right? So how will it actually 
rejuvenate our water body. So sewage treatment plant have got their own limitations. Then coming on to the rainwater harvesting, into the rainwater harvesting, what usually the approach we take is uh, uh, we collect all the rooftop water, channelize it through pipelines, and then put it into uh, a tank which is created uh, into the bottom. And we expect that it will recharge the aquifers and it will keep the water bodies filled with water. Actually, it doesn't happen because I told you the natural process of harvesting is already existing into the water bodies and it is through soil capillary. So if there is a bottom sludge deposit, obviously the recharge will not happen, right? Now, when I say this, that uh, sludge deposit is to be removed, the usual administration uh, approach is to desilt. Now, desiltation again is not the right approach because mechanical desiltation, what it is doing is it is removing the silt, which is a natural produce. Silt is required for creation of the soil capillaries. So the moment you remove the silt, now there is a fresh soil, which again needs that weathering to happen. It will take its own sweet time to recreate the soil capillaries and the entire biodiversity will come to a standstill till the time the soil capillaries are not recreated and the surface water body is not linked to the aquifer right coming on to the plantation drive we usually say that for conservation of water we need to plant trees but we never plant trees we only plant saplings and saplings needs lots and lots of water to become trees so the saplings that we are planting are actually consumers of water. They're not producers of water. So there again, our approach is wrong, right? So if we look at the various models available for water treatment, what we see is bioremediation, gestation period is approximately one quarter, phytoremediation is about three quarters, nine months. DVATS is again three to four quarters. Constructed wetland is four to five quarters. A uh, sewer treatment plant can take even a year or more than that. Uh, floating islands can take about two to three quarters because of uh, that basic, uh, uh, what do you call it, production of the floating islands itself. Whereas if you look at our technology, cownomics, it, it is just a matter of one or two weeks maximum, right? Because we have to study the water body, we have to make a... Uh, uh, prescription and then we make a concoction which is a concentrated liquid which is shipped to the location right so all these logistics planning and study and uh, making of uh, the medicine all that will take uh, some time and this this time maximum can stretch up to two weeks there have been places wherein we started in a matter of two days also right so wherever the study was uh, done uh, prior itself Right now, if you look at the impact, the water pollution is something that everybody is trying to address. Everybody is trying to clean just the water. Whereas if you look at impact on air pollution, there is no impact at all. Uh, aquifer correction, aquifer recharges, plenty of people will claim that they are doing recharge also, but aquifer correction, nobody does. Biodiversity conservation, nobody does. Ambient temperature maintenance in the vicinity, nobody does. Carbon sequestration, nobody does. So as I said in the beginning, our approach is to restore the ecosystem services, which we had categorized into three different categories, which was mitigation service, conservation service, and maintenance service. All these three services are restored in our treatment, whereas most of the water treatment technologies are only focusing on cleaning of water, which is not a uh, restoration of natural process, right? If uh, you look at the natural concept, in nature, there is no concept of waste or wealth. Both of them are man-made creations. The only sustainable phenomena on this planet is nature itself. And why it is sustainable is because everything is moving in cycle. As long as this cycle is on, the sustainability will not be a question at all. So what we're doing in our waste treatment, <clears throat> if you look at the solid waste uh, management approaches, 
what we are trying to do is consume the waste for production of something else. So it can be electricity, it can be uh, cardboard, it can be uh, your manure, it can be anything. You're just changing the form, bringing it back to the cycle, right? The same approach is required into the water also. The liquid waste management will also be done the same way when the waste is transformed into wealth, right? Like if you have to uh, deal with a sick unit, a, a company which has gone sick, what is the right approach to make it a, a fresh and sustainable company? The only approach is you will look into the liabilities, you will look into the asset. The moment you devise a plan to transform your liabilities into asset, the company will become profitable. Now, if we translate that into the water body uh, rejuvenation approaches, the biggest liability that we have is the wastewater. If the wastewater can be transformed into the biggest asset, the problem is sorted, right? So what do we have as an ingredient? <laughs> Sorry. So what do we have as an ingredient of the wastewater which is coming in? We have the same nutrient load, right? Now, these nutrients are required for production of planktons. If these nutrients can be broken down and can be used as a raw material for production of planktons, everything will be sorted. That is what we do. So, moving on, there are certain news headlines that has been created. Danik Jagran, I have shown you Telangana today was for a project that we did in Hyderabad. It was Pudikunta Lake. Indian Express had published uh, one of our case studies in uh, uh, Mathura. Uh, Ashtak and ABP News had covered our uh, Mandakini River case study. ETV Uttar Pradesh had uh, covered our uh, Ayodhya case study. Times of India had covered our Delhi case studies. So this uh, news headline you've already seen. This is from Danik Jagran, Varanasi. This is uh, Indian Express Mathura case study. This is Mansi Ganga in Govardhan. This is uh, uh, ABP News, Mandakini. This is ETV Uttar Pradesh for uh, Laldigi Lake in Ayodhya. Uh, this is again Aaj Tak in News 24 for Mandakini River. These are some of our awards and recognitions. This is our uh, Jal Shakti Mantrale Water Hero Award. We've been uh, in the top 10 uh, authors on water by Smart Water Magazine Spain. This is our recommendation certificate for Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs uh, for being a technology and implementation partner for Amrut 2.0. Uh, this is TED US. Uh, this is UN Waters and Department of Science and Technology, uh, Government of Rajasthan. Uh, we've been there into various other talks also. This was uh, the World Ozone Day, uh, Asian Development and Research Institute, uh, Patna. And this is an appreciation certificate by Archaeological Director of Uttar Pradesh for the Varanasi project. This is SHM in Odisha. Uh, this is from IIT BHU for our Varanasi project. This is in the certificate of appreciation by C. Ganga, which is uh, the Apex Academic Institute for uh, Testing of the Water Technologies, which is a consortium of all seven IITs. This is School of Planning Architecture, New Delhi. This is CSIR NIRI when they invited us uh, for Lake Monitoring and Management webinar. This was during COVID. And uh, this was an invite by Central Pollution Control Board for uh, explaining our concept of carbon sequestration through water bodies. This was our presentation with the Honorable Minister for Jal Shakti. This was inside the ministry in, in his chamber only. Here you can see the Honorable Minister, Mr. Shikhawat is there. Uh, he was uh, the Minister of State, uh, Ratanlal Kataria ji, when we gave the presentation in 2020. He is uh, Director Technical for NMCG, Mr. D.P. Mathuria. And this is... Uh, some of the stalwarts of the industry and ecology and environmental science in the country who have given their uh, 
opinion about our technology. Dr. Nivedita Haran was the head of committee of expert for Dal Lake rejuvenation. Dr. Rambuj was India's representation in UNESCO for almost 12 years. He was the brain behind uh, conceiving the idea of UN SDGs. Dr. Uma Shankar Singh was principal chief conservator of forest for uh, government of Uttar Pradesh. Dr. Ashok Ghosh has been the chairman of Bihar State Pollution Control Board. So that's the end of the presentation. If uh, I think now we can move on to the Q&A session as per the plan. Aveep sir, you can take it uh, forward and I can just stop presenting. Thank you, sir. It's Thank you, sir. It's such a question. Like you have, like you have pointed out, pointed out the what, what, the what, what is the need of the, the need of the several technologies, several technologies, technology, comparison of metrics, of metrics of commodities. I think echo is very much from my side. Uh, sorry for all the inconvenience. And uh, very uh, like the, all the success stories, how it works including the various nature-based solutions, metrics, their features, and how this uh, cownomics technology, the natural extract technology is uh, uh, very much impact, very much impact results, results, how, how three, uh, three, uh, positive, positive results from, results from uh, so I'm showing, so I'm uh, showing questions, questions from, uh, from uh, Adbox. Adbox. This technique is named this technique is is named as cownomics. Where can I see the questions? Sir, in the chat Sir, box. In the chat can... box, you can check. Check. It's from Gaurav Manna. It's from Gaurav Manna. Red box is actually very small. Okay. Okay, I'll start from the beginning. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening. Good evening, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. There's so many good afternoons. <laughs> okay, where does the question start? Sir, you can check the three. You can check the three eighteen. I can check what? Three eighteen PM. Three eighteen PM. Three eighteen. Okay. Three zero one, three zero two, three eighteen. Good afternoon. Vaishali Gijare to everyone. Okay, Gaurav Manna. Sir, this herbal medicine should be poured once or at regular intervals to clean the reservoir. Okay. Uh, Gaurav ji, uh, it depends on the study. As I said, we need to study the water body first. Then only we can uh, make a, a medicine, right? Now, what happens is when you have to study the water body, you have to take a lot of considerations uh, into the study, like which agroclimatic zone it is, what kind of biodiversity is there, is there any life into the water body or not, what kind of contamination is coming in, uh, uh, what is the volume of contamination, if the contamination is industrial effluent, the medicine will be different, if it is domestic sewage, it will be different, if there is life in the water body, you cannot just put in any kind of a toxin remover because it will impact even the life, right? So you have to take all these factors into the consideration. In fact, you also have to take care of what kind of vegetation is there on the embankment. Okay. Now to understand this entire concept, uh, you first need to know that are we the only reason for water body contamination? Or if we remove hypothetically, if you remove the entire human race from the face of earth, will the water bodies get contaminated or not? Right? Most of the people will say, yes, we are the cause. And without us, the water body will not get contaminated. Now, it is very, very important to understand the natural phenomena. Whether human race is there on the planet or not, water bodies will still get contaminated due to the natural reasons. Okay? Now, the moment you understand this factor, that how the, did the water body get contaminated and decontaminated as a natural process, you will be able to understand the entire approach. Okay. Now, let me just give you a scenario. When, whenever there is a volcanic eruption, 
lava is something that will come in the end the first thing that comes out is the fume and these fumes are of heavy metals and minerals where will these fumes get settled on the top surface of the water body so water body gets contaminated with all the heavy metals and minerals right what we call as industrial pollution today okay yes. so yes. that happens naturally now let us suppose volcanic eruption did not happen there was uh, a storm there was a typhoon or uh, uh, a tornado anything of that sort what it will do is all the vegetation around the embankment of the water body will shed their leaves and fruits and seeds and flowers and bark everything will fall into water body everything has got different levels of phosphate too much of phosphate will lead to eutrophication water body gets contaminated now let us suppose this also didn't happen earthquake can happen when the earthquake will happen the aquatic organism will sense it before the terrestrial organisms so what can they do they can't do anything they'll get scared because the earth is shaky they will excrete too much their excreta is pure ammonia too much of ammonia will again lead to eutrophication so whether human race is there or not water bodies will still get contaminated due to the natural causes right and what is the contamination phosphate sulfate nitrate heavy metals minerals right what are we contributing as a nutrient overload as sewage or industrial effluent treated untreated sewage or runoff water or storm water it is the same so whatever contamination we are doing to the water body number one we must understand it is not something new for the water body water bodies know how to deal with it then where is the problem the problem is a volcanic eruption or a thunderstorm or a tempest or a tornado or an earthquake is once in a blue moon activity it is not happening regularly whereas our industrial production or our sewage production is a regular activity okay now we need to understand how did nature used to deal with it without a human race so the nature had a process it will create weeds weeds will consume the excess once they've consumed the excess they've actually eaten out their entire feed then they will starve to death when they starve to death they'll sink into the same water body and again they'll be decomposed by the natural process just as a organic waste so the water body got contaminated and got decontaminated in the same flow now when we start adding our sewage or industrial effluent to the water body it is number one a consistent phenomena which will come but they will never go because they are consuming the fresh inlet by the time they have consumed it completely we have got another fresh supply so weeds will start infestation of the entire surface when the entire surface is covered with weeds sunlight will not enter into the water body so the process of photosynthesis will get compromised because photons are not available so if the photons are not available process of photosynthesis is getting compromised the dissolved oxygen production unit will cease to exist on the other hand whatever we are adding that consistency is maintained so the suspended and the dissolved solids are going up by default the bod and cod is going up the do is going down eventually the do will be completely zero aerobic life will cease to exist anaerobic digestion will start to happen naturally anaerobic digestion will have a natural by product of hydrogen sulfide which will cause the foul smell in the vicinity secondly the water has become stable so it is the best breeding ground for the mosquitoes that is why the outbreak of vector borne disease will also happen naturally so this is the process of contamination and decontamination of the water body right so how much of herbal medicine to be poured the frequency the potency and the quantity everything will vary on the study right 
Now the entire treatment is divided into three phases. The first phase is resurrection, wherein the dormant native microbiota is resurrected back to life. Second phase is restoration, wherein the bottom sludge deposit is completely consumed by the metabolic activity of the native microbiota. And the third phase is rejuvenation, wherein we maintain the digestion capacity of the water body is calibrated with the fresh incoming load. So if the water body is having a fresh incoming load, like in case of Lehtar, I told you 10 MLD of untreated sewage was coming in. We calibrated the digestion capacity to 10 MLD. And after the treatment is over, the water body is good to go. It will be sustainable till the next monsoon. Because during the monsoon, we cannot control the inflow to the water body. So if the water body is calibrated for 10 MLD and you put in pour in 100 MLD, obviously this entire system will collapse, right? So you need to do a preventive maintenance during monsoon. Otherwise the water body is good to go on its own. I hope that answers your question, Mr. Gaurav. Uh, any other question? Participation for the progress of excellent presentation. Thank you, Dr. Manavalan. So there is one more. There is one more question from Gaurav Manna. Yeah. Gaurav Manna. One more question. Yes. Why? Yes. Why? The I'm. I'm just going through one by off. one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gaurav, why this technique is named cow nomics? Okay. <laughs> See. Uh, when we invented something, we had to give a nomenclature also, you know. So, if you are uh, creating an aircraft and you ca call it a cart, doesn't make sense, right? So, you have to be innovative, not just in your innovation or your invention. You have to give a nomenclature also, right? Now, today, if you log on to Google and you search for Madhukar Swambu or Vedic Srijan or Kaunomics, everything will land you on the same page, right? So, whenever you are creating something new, you have to actually, because as an inventor, you have to give the name to uh, your technology also. Now, because our technology was based on Vedic sciences, because the Vedic sciences are the only sciences in the world which says water is a living ecosystem. Otherwise, what we have studied in our school or what you would have studied in your school is water is just a dead inert molecule of H2O, right? Whereas the Vedic science says Chitijal Pavak Gagan Samira, there are five key elements which are called Pancha Mahabhut, which are the cause of life on this planet, right? So by virtue of they being the cause of life, water cannot be a dead substance it is a living ecosystem right so we had to give a, a name which was resonating this idea that is why the name of the company is vedic Srijan. that is why we call the technology as cownomics uh, it is just a nomenclature there's nothing to relate to how it works or uh, what ingredients it, it has it is just to give you a fancy name so that it it latches on to your brain and like you asked this question everybody would be inquisitive enough to understand what is this term all about so that's the only reason any other questions oh there's so many thank yous Thank you, wonderful people, wonderful presentation. And uh, you came uh, and you uh, actually spared time for the presentation. I am more thankful to you. So I think uh, I'm well within time. It's uh, any any other uh, questions, Avipsa or Anurag? Sir, I have, Sir, one, I question. have one question. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, can, uh, sir, can you please mute? mute? Just a second. And now I think it's fine. My voice is properly audible. 
ओके सर सो आई हैव वन सबमिशन दैट यू टोल्ड कि दैट यू हैव अप्लाइड सम वर्बल एक्सट्रैक्ट्स टू द वाटर बॉडीज बट स्टिल देयर इज सम इनलेट्स एंड वी कांट स्टॉप दोस इनलेट्स लाइक इफ वी क्लोज दोस इनलेट्स आल्सो बट इट समटाइम्स आफ्टर समटाइम इट विल कम सो इफ वी लाइक आफ्टर वन मंथ इंटरवल और वन वीक इंटरवल इफ वी एबल टू रिवाइव द वाटर कंप्लीटली but after some time if these inlets keep coming and uh, and again we uh, like leave the, that water body unmaintained for after time like few uh, times more so again is there any possibility that the again the water will turn to that status and uh, again we have to apply this kind of techniques whatever we have applied earlier so something is happen or it's a cyclic process or once we treated we no need to treat it again or uh, we we have to keep our doses is on a cycle basis what is the process i need to learn that thing so as i explained uh, there are three phases of treatment number one is resurrection then it is restoration then it is rejuvenation in the rejuvenation phase what we are doing is we are calibrating the digestion capacity of the water body with the fresh incoming load so if the load is let's say 10 mld the water body will be able to digest 10 mld on a daily basis okay so as long as the inlet is 10 mld only water body doesn't have any problem right as i explained the problem starts happening when the uh, the accumulation of the waste water or the nutrient goes beyond the digestion capacity you know just to give you an example if let's say if i have a digestion capacity of 2 rotis i will remain healthy as long as i am eating 2 rotis right let's say i was there in some marriage function yesterday and uh, the food was wonderful instead of two i ate four rotis what will happen in digestion right so for indigestion what i will do is i will have to increase my metabolic rate right i will have to exercise more i'll have to walk more i will have to eat hajmola or pudin hara right all these are basically adding to increase my digestion rate my metabolic activity rate right now as long as this is done once in a while there is no problem right but the moment i start making it a habit that every day there is some or the other function and every day i am eating 5 to 10 chapatis instead of 2 eventually i'll start falling sick then i have to be hospitalized and then they will give me all that intravenous medicine and everything right to restore the system of the body okay so whenever this inlet is coming in our treatment is basically calibrating it with the digestion capacity and the inlet but if the inlet goes exorbitantly high then the calibrated one if it is below that there is absolutely no problem like if i have a digestion capacity of 2 chapatis and i am eating only one it doesn't matter it's absolutely fine with the system right it will become a problem only when 2 becomes 3 or 4 or higher than that right so once the water body is rejuvenated it is good enough to sustain itself as long as the inlet is not multiplied so instead of 10 mld if you put in 100 mld obviously there will be a problem the system will collapse otherwise the water body will be good to go on its own right and that is why in in this entire treatment period no channel is diverted or stopped whatever is coming in will continue to come in because you know this is again an approach like postponing the problem when you divert a nala from coming into one particular water body it will be diverted to some other water body ultimately water will land into a water body only so in the name of saving one water body if you are polluting another one it is again not a sustainable approach na so that is why we what we suggest is the most sustainable and holistic way is to treat it in situ conditions so that it is digested and consumed 
gone are the days when we could have afforded segregation and collection approach that we are doing into the stps even today what what are we doing into stps you have primary clarifier secondary clarifier and tertiary clarifier right what are they doing either you are doing flocculation or you are doing coagulation or you are doing aeration the only three processes in the stp right now whether you do it mechanically you do it chemically or you do it biologically doesn't matter ultimately you are doing only three processes right and in all the three processes what are you doing into aeration the top channel is being churned so that it comes in contact with the air and the oxygen level increases when the oxygen level is increasing the suspended and the dissolved solids will eventually get settled they will get settled in the bottom the sludge will be taken out this is what is called segregation and collection right similarly into coagulation what are you doing you are just settling everything sludge is again taken out right into flocculation what are you doing you blowing up air in the bottom and everything is coming as froth on the top and then you are removing the froth so you are only segregating and collecting waste out of water which is not a sustainable approach because as long as the waste remains a waste it will be a problem now you look at the natural system when the bird excretes what happens bird has eaten some food now this food can be a leaf it can be an insect it can be a fruit it can be anything right whatever it has eaten some portion of it is consumed by the body for the normal metabolic activities of the body and the some portion is actually rejected as waste which is excreted out of the body because within the body it will create toxins right so it is waste for the bird that is why it is excreted out but when it falls onto the soil surface it will create jungles because it has got lots and lots of seeds the same excreta of the bird if it falls into the water body it will create planktons which will again be feed for the fishes so everything is moving in the cyclic way as long as the cycle is on everything will fall in place the moment you restrict the cycle what we do in segregation and collection we are collecting the waste that is why it is becoming unsustainable right i hope that answers your question yes sir like it's very structured and satisfactory it's like i understood i got your point thank you sir and i think chandan sir is with chandan sir chandan sir actually i have a question hello Yeah, yes sir sir thank you for your uh, for sharing such a wonderful experience so uh, just one question like you told us hello am i audible yeah please hello. go ahead with your question hello. yeah you are audible actually i was drinking water that's why i, I stopped understand. the camera I sir you just told uh, us, just uh, told us uh, uh, how this can how be can used be to use like to like has uh, has uh, in certain in areas certain areas we are using the concoction concoction uh, it has uh, it has caused caused malaria or malaria or mosquito to go down to go down so My so, idea is of my idea is of my idea. Why can't we use it? Can't we use it? Sorry to interrupt. Urban areas, urban areas, like simple urban areas. Like simple like urban areas. Simple like urban areas. Like 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 due to the waterfall or rainfall, uh, it's getting uh, stored or uh, mosquitoes have been uh, born in those places, and this uh, means like mos uh, malaria, dengue is. Use this uh, medicine also says that this can be reduced. I'm just asking. Can we use this kind of? Anurag, I guess there is a bandwidth issue, but uh, let me just uh, reiterate your question. What I have understood uh, because your voice was missing in between. 
uh, I guess you are asking that uh, the solution wherever you have seen is all in the rural areas and why can't it be applied into the urban area? Is that correct? Hello. 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 Yeah, Hello. Anurag, are you asking the same question? Is it applicable to urban areas? I can't hear you, Anurag. Okay, if your question was that, is it not applicable to urban areas? My friend, I uh, just shared a slide wherein I explained we are the technology and implementation partner to Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs for Atal Mission for Urban Transformation and Rejuvenation, the Amrut Mission 2.0. That is all about urban areas. So we have been working in almost all the urban areas. Guwahati is the state cap uh, is the state commercial capital for Assam. Uh, Delhi is the national capital. That is again an urban area. Hyderabad is also an urban area. So we have worked uh, in urban and rural at par. I mean, uh, we don't differentiate between urban and rural. The technology is applicable to the remotest of the places to the uh, most uh, metropolitan uh, areas of uh, the country. Now, if your question was different, you may please ask your question once again, uh, because what I understood is what I explained. Anurag, am I audible? Actually, today in NID, we are facing a lot of technical problems <laughs> that, that is currently happening with Anurag also. And even uh, Chindan Ghoshtar is also facing that same problem. <laughs> so. Yes, Anurag, you can continue. Hello. Yeah. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh... Sir, so just I wanted to ask, like, because of these uh, water, rainwater uh, collection, these kind of things are happening surrounding in surrounding areas where mosquito borne diseases are increasing. Why can't we use this uh, medicine as a medicine, as a eradication medicine, to throw these medicines around in the surrounding areas such that these mosquito can be killed? Or this is my just a question. Like, it has been used to clean water. This is a good thing. It can be used for this purpose also. Okay, now let me answer your question. Uh, first and foremost, we're not making any mosquito repellent. We're not making any uh, mosquito, uh, demosquitofication uh, medicine or uh, chemical or anything of that sort. We are neither cleaning water. I told you in the beginning itself, everybody is trying to clean water. We are not. We are only resurrecting the native ecology of the water body in the wetland. Cleaning of the water is a natural byproduct. Right, you know, right, if, if you are healthy, you'll be able to concentrate also. You'll be able to breathe well also. You'll be able to run also. That doesn't mean that I'm giving you an immunity booster that is a kind of a protein that will help you run faster. I'm just keeping you healthy. That's it. Okay. So if we are making a medicine for, let's say, uh, X water body, it will not be applicable to Y water body. Okay. If you're making a medicine for a drain, it will be workable only in that patch of that drain. Okay. Because every water body is a different ecosystem altogether. When you take samples of the water for, let's say, a running stream, every two kilometers, the property of the water will change. Okay. Why it changes is because the kind of soil, the kind of air, the kind of biodiversity, the kind of vegetation, everything is contributing towards the kind of water that we have. Okay. You take water from Panipat and you take water from Sonipat, you will be picking up two different kinds of water. Okay. 
सोनीपत यू हैव अलाइन एक्विफर पानीपत यू डोंट हैव यू हैव अ स्वीट एक्विफर इन पानीपत राइट सो एवरीवेयर द वॉटर एंड द वॉटर बॉडी विल बी डिफरेंट दैट इज वाई आर मेडिसिन दैट वी मेक इज a tailor made solution for a particular water body in a particular phase of rejuvenation okay so even the same water body during resurrection will have a different medicine during restoration the medicine will change and during rejuvenation the medicine will change okay so killing of the mosquitoes is not the solution us tried doing it in 1978 when they invented this uh, chemical called ddt they actually started spraying all across us with airplanes but what happened in a span of 2 years the mosquitoes were able to build their immunity against ddt 1982 they had to ban ddt in us okay so we cannot disrespect the natural intelligence of life even the single celled organism abhi abhi aapne uh, pandemic ke time pe dekha na kitni jaldi jaldi mutate kar raha hai a new variant has come a new variant has come what are these variants these variants are understanding ke aapne medication liya chloroquine to usne apna form change kar liya आपने रेमडेसिविर लेके आया उसने फिर फॉर्म चेंज कर लिया आपने वैक्सीन बनाया उसने फिर फॉर्म चेंज कर लिया राइट सो सिंगल सेल्ड ऑर्गेनिज्म के लेवल पे जो म्यूटेशन होता है जो एडेप्टेशन टू द एनवायरनमेंट होता है वो बहुत ही फास्ट होता है राइट दैट इज द बेसिक लेवल ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस विच इज देयर इन ऑल लाइफ फॉर्म्स सो द बेस्ट अप्रोच फॉर गेटिंग रेड ऑफ अ प्रॉब्लम is not to kill but to eradicate the reason and the reason is stagnant water water is not supposed to be stagnated right so wherever we are creating a manual boundary by creating a stagnation we need to remove those boundations let the water flow and if the water viscosity is a problem we can solve that problem so that the water remains in good flow as long as water is flowing there will be no mosquito colonies killing of mosquito will not serve the purpose thank you sir so any other questions abib sir or anurag or anybody else somehow i i can't see the chat so if uh, there is any question abib sir you can ask me yes sir uh, there is one question on one side nation is losing existing water bodies and no initiative to develop the new water bodies then how to achieve the water scarcity for all okay that's an interesting question see on one hand what we are doing is Uh, we are polluting the water bodies by by putting in sewage and industrial effluent into the water bodies on the other hand we are the same people who are craving about water scarcity now just about 100 years back every water body on the surface of earth which was within the country called india had drinkable water quality standards just 100 years back ओके गांव में एक वो कहावत भी होती थी कि इफ यू हैव टू मेजर समबडीज एक्सपीरियंस तो वो लोग कहते थे कि उससे पूछना वो बड़ा एक्सपीरियंस आदमी है क्यों क्योंकि उसने घाट घाट का पानी पिया है मतलब हर घाट का पानी पीने लायक होता था राइट टुडे आप किसी भी घाट का मतलब गंगा का भी पानी आप पी लो अगर जा करके घाट पर तो नेक्स्ट डे यू विल बी देयर इन टू अस्पिटल राइट तो जो हमारे वाटर बॉडी जो रिसोर्सेस थे हमारे ड्रिंकिंग वाटर के रिसोर्सेस थे या इरिगेशन वाटर के रिसोर्सेस थे उनको तो हम करते जा रहे पोल्यूट एंड देन वी आर सेइंग देन वी आर क्रिबिंग के वाटर स्कॉर्सिटी भी है वाटर स्ट्रेस भी है 
अभी अभी रिसेंटली जो हमारा वाटर बॉडी सेंसेस का रिपोर्ट जो है दैट वाज पब्लिश्ड बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ जल शक्ति व्हिच सेज वी हैव ओवर 25 ऑलमोस्ट 24 टू 25 लाख वाटर बॉडीज अक्रॉस द कंट्री राइट एंड नन ऑफ देम इज यूजेबल जस्ट इमेजिन एंड If you look at uh, Central Groundwater Board का ना हर district का report बनता है, okay? You can simply type your district and then you search for the uh, CWGB report, okay? So let's say if it, if we are talking about Ambala, um, so Ambala district report by CWGB, you will get the complete analysis of that particular district. Which will say that okay, this district has got two lakh forty five thousand bore wells, which are in the government records. Apart from that, there will be some private bore wells also, right? So, हम इतने bore well लगा लगा के पानी को खींचते जा रहे हैं बाहर, right? और वो सारा पानी जो हम बाहर निकालते हैं, उसको हम consume कम करते हैं. कंटामिनेट ज्यादा करते हैं एंड देन वी लेट इट लूज इनटू द वाटर बॉडी ओके तो जो सरफेस वाटर बॉडीज हैं वो तो हमारे किसी काम की है नहीं एंड बिकॉज वी हैव कंटामिनेटेड देम ऑन द अदर हैंड 75 परसेंट ऑफ द डेली रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द कंट्री इज एक्सट्रैक्टेड आउट ऑफ द एक्विफर एंड रिजल्टेंट क्या होता है उसका द डिजास्टर दैट हैपन्स इन मल्टीपल फॉर्म्स द डिजीज आउटब्रेक फ्लडिंग Uh, your uh, drought conditions even if you look at it even earthquakes jo surface soil ke upar rehne wale jitne bhi uh, prani hain aur jo uh, movement of the tectonic plates hai wo hota hai uh, sub surface level pe beech mein aapka ek pneumatic shock absorber tha which was aquifer usko aapne extraction chalu kar diya आपने कभी ये ऑब्जर्व किया कि पिछले 20 साल में भूकंप के झटके अक्रॉस द ग्लोब इतने ज्यादा क्यों बढ़ गए बिकॉज जो शॉक एब्जॉर्बर था उसको हमने डिप्लीट कर दिया राइट right? जाहिर सी बात है वो झटके हमको ज्यादा पता लगने लगे आर एक्सट्रैक्शन वी आर डूइंग ओवर एक्सट्रैक्शन एंड अंडर रिचार्ज दैट इज वाई वी आर हेडिंग टूवर्ड्स अलैप्स That is why UN has to come up with a UN SDG concept. That we need to live with a sustainable goal towards life. That is why Modi ji is talking about mission life, lifestyle for environment. ये कोई नई बात नहीं है. आज से सौ साल पहले we were living in absolute harmony with nature. We were hundred percent sustainable. आज आप सुबह देखो ना आप जैसे ही आप सुबह उठते हो आप पानी का पोल्यूशन चालू करते हैं वेदर यू आर ब्रशिंग योर ट्री यू आर एडिंग फ्लोराइड्स टू द वाटर वेदर यू आर वॉशिंग योर हैंड्स यू आर एडिंग फॉस्फेट टू द वाटर ठीक है आप कोई भी एक्टिविटी ऐसी नहीं करते जिसमें आप सॉयल वाटर एयर तीनों को पोल्यूट ना करो किसी ना किसी को आप पोल्यूट जरूर करोगे राइट right? आप घर से निकलते हो ऑफिस आते हो यू विल बी ट्रेवलिंग इधर बाय बस और बाई और put your bike or buy a car you doing emission theek hai you polluting air aap jo bhi activity karte ho you are consistently polluting the environment around you and this is our lifestyle today okay that is why the concept of mission life has to be brought in to the world by honorable prime minister that we need to start living sustainably right that is why we have the concept of circular economy ki ki kisi ek product ko jitni der tak istemal kar sakte ho utna aap uske production ko rok rahe ho right aur hamare yahan pe kya hota hai we are the most sustainable people on this planet abhi uh, I don't know whether you would have seen in your homes or not, but uh, जब toothpaste से जब paste निकलना बंद हो जाता था, जब हम छोटे थे, 
तो हम अपनी मम्मी को बोलते थे कि मम्मी निकल नहीं रहा है तो वो बेलन से दबा के उसमें से निकाल देती राइट जिस प्रोडक्ट को जिस एक्सटेंट तक यूज कर सकते हो तब तक यूज करोगे तो उसका नया प्रोडक्शन नहीं होगा उसका नया प्रोडक्शन नहीं होने का मतलब ये है कि यू आर कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टूवर्ड सेक्युलर इकोनॉमी राइट सो एवरीथिंग इज लिंक टूगेदर वी हैव टू स्टार्ट लिविंग सस्टेनेबली दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दैट्स दैट बीन अट ऑफ आर कल्चर सो एनीथिंग एल्स डू वी हैव i think uh, doc sahab would have sorted out his problem uh, sir aap kuch bolenge or uh, i mean how do we conclude the session now Adeep sir, you you would like to conclude or, uh, Anurag, you would like like to to conclude 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 or Anurag but but there is, but there is is one more question uh, that uh, Yamuna river 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 very long river, and Delhi government try to clean the 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 method is used by the government is best or not is this question and he is also requesting that um, clean it sir and please explain the method used by the Delhi government. ओके सी फॉर्चुनेटली और अनफॉर्चुनेटली आई हैव बीन ब्लेस्ड विद दिस नॉलेज ओनली टू टेक केयर ऑफ द नेचुरल इको सिस्टम्स द मैन मेड सिस्टम्स आर सो कॉम्प्लेक्स दैट इट डज नॉट हैव अ सिंपल सोल्यूशन इट ऑल यू नो ऑल द नेचुरल रिसोर्स ऑफ द कंट्री आर ओन्ड बाय द गवर्नमेंट्स रिस्पेक्टिव गवर्नमेंट्स now delhi state government has got its own uh, philosophy of treating it so uh, i can't uh, help that i mean i i have explained it uh, to uh, various agencies that uh, this is how it is done and this is how it cannot it uh, cannot be a sustainable approach but uh, unfortunately uh, we have not got any opportunity till now to actually treat yamuna uh though we have given presentation to delhi government and all the concerned authorities as well right uh what they are doing is uh something uh i would not like to comment upon because frankly speaking i am not aware because they are actually taking um stop gap arrangements here and there so there are plenty of things they are they are doing but it is not a consistent continuous approach right now recently i have uh, come to know uh, because of twitter that even the lg office has started doing something on this basically the approach is uh, you would all be aware of najafgarh nala right now it is called nala actually it was a river called sahibi river so that river because of the massive uh, discharge of uh, the sewage and the effluent is now technically called nala now this uh, nala is actually being trying to uh, i mean lg office is trying to recover that nala or uh, purify the uh, water by putting in some sewage treatment plants and what not so there are multiple uh, multi pronged approach that they are taking uh, if, actually if you look at a river yamuna there is hardly about uh, 12 and a half kilometers of yamuna in delhi but if you actually look at uh, the number of drains which are falling in this 12 and a half kilometer you will be astonished to know that it's more than 100 kilometers of drains which are being emptied into the river yamuna so just imagine a 12 kilometer river having 100 kilometers of sewage and effluent how will it survive you know so that's what the problem is but uh, eventually i have all faith in indian democracy and <laughs> the governments they'll definitely come down with a solution and they'll serve the purpose somehow so 
that's more of a politically correct statement, but uh, I would like to restrain from commenting on what government is doing. So definitely there will be one news uh, like mission will come clean Yamuna mission like currently clean Ganga mission is uh, uh, very much on limelight and, uh, like they are also incorporating various young people uh, in terms of the research work to clean the Ganga so definitely they will uh, include Yamuna in that uh, aspect also. So thank you, sir, for your insightful video on behalf of uh, NIDM. So uh, Professor Chandan will, uh, might be having some issue. So I, I can I think on behalf of him also, I am thanking you and thank you all the participants for tolerating our <laughs> technical problems. <laughs> but uh, definitely, sir has all uh, taken all our platform, and it's the uh, it's very useful also for uh, a great purpose. Whatever we have decided so that objective is fulfilled from this platform so thank you sir it's a pleasant hearing you and it's an honor to have the opportunity to express my appreciation to you and i'm uh, grateful to the esteemed participants of the webinar for their presence and uh, nice listening and uh, making a more interactive session by asking your questions and it's such a nice session thank you for that for making this event so successful and at last and and at last this now, if I just wanted to tell you something that even after this session is over, if you are getting any more queries, you can send me on mail. I can uh, actually address all those queries even after the session, because uh, I guess you are also making it live on YouTube. So there might be some questions on YouTube as well. So whatever be the queries, you can just uh, jot it down on uh, one word file. You can send it to me. I can send you all the responses. So that sure, nobody sir. goes sure, unanswered. Sir. That is the key objective. Sure, sir. Definitely, I'll do that effort. And at last but not the least, I'm thankful to Professor Chandan Ghosh for his guidance and support for conducting this uh, webinar and making this webinar so successful. And before closing, uh, I'd like to uh, share the certificate of appreciation for uh, our eminent speaker. Is my screen visible? Yes, it's visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 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 This to you. This to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm honored. Please send a soft copy on my mail. Yes, sir. Sure. And then uh, for the participants, kindly visit to the NIDM training portal, give your valuable feedback, and after then only you can able to uh, like collect your certificate from the website. And thank you. I hope you will be joining us for our coming series also, as I have already mentioned in the previous session that uh, the NIDM has initiated the webinar series and definitely on every Friday on 2.30 to 4.30, we have a new topic and we have new guest speaker and for enlightening us on the particular theme specific. So be with us. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Anurag. Anurag, you have to say something? Anurag, are you there? <laughs> no, I think again, he's facing some problem. So no, no worries. So on behalf of Anurag also, I'm thanking you, sir, and thanking all the participants. And thank you and have a nice day.